The Battlebit Remastered playtests have really become a weekly ritual for myself and many other gamers out there. It doesn't matter to me that the tests start at stupid o'clock at night for me, I'm always keen to make time for this gem of a first person shooter game. But the days of being limited by set playtest times may soon be over. G'day there once again viewers, your mate Kamikaze78 here and today we're going to be providing an update on Battlebit Remastered as it rapidly approaches its early access launch. So I do wish that this was the video that I could tell you guys all about a hard release date in. I really, really do. But this is not the day for such things, unfortunately. What we do know is that the developers are on track to release the early access for this game in quarter two of 2023, which basically means any time between now and the end of June. So really, any time now. I know there's some, you know, skeptics out there who are critical of this game ever coming out in the first place, but with the final Final steps to releasing the game to early access like trailer production, anti-cheat integration and the DDoS firewall being at the forefront of the developer's focus at the moment, I'm personally pretty confident in that timeline myself. And given the size of this development team and where they've come from and what they've achieved so far, it's hard to not be proud of how far this game has come and of the team that are responsible for such accomplishments. I personally this week have opted to become a Patreon supporter of the game. Quite frankly, I knew I was going to buy into the early access of the game when it launched anyway, and being a Patreon backer for the game acts as a quote-unquote pre-order if you will, effectively giving you a key to the game when it does launch into early access later this year. But in addition to that, being a Patreon supporter does get you a bunch of really cool cosmetics for your soldier and weapons in the game, and i got to admit, I'm bloody impressed by these cosmetics. They look sick enough to make Make the monetary support worth it in my opinion and they don't go as far as to break the visual theme and continuity of the game they feel pretty grounded and don't feel outlandish or out of place like some of them are as simple as adding straps to some of the weapons but it's just that little extra detail that adds something you know and to be clear this isn't a sponsored video or anything by the way i just figured it would be a good opportunity to highlight some of the cool shit you get in game by being a patreon supporter and also just reiterate the fact that you get a key to the game for release should you be enthusiastic enough to support the game during its development process. So yeah, not sponsored at all, just something I wanted to highlight as a supporter of the game myself through Patreon. But anyway, plugs aside, there have been some additional quality of life updates and even teasers for upcoming content in the last week that I wanted to highlight really quickly in this video. Some of which are pretty exciting, it has to be said. Probably the change that players will notice immediately is the reduction of kill requirements to unlock a lot of attachments in the game now. Prior to this update, there were some attachments on a lot of the guns out there that would require in excess of 400, 500, sometimes even 700 and beyond kills to unlock. This definitely gave you a lot of stuff to grind for and it would be something that would, you know, take your time to do so, but it also really grinded out the experience of progressing weapons so slowly to the point where it almost felt sluggish at times. And I do think that that was to the game's detriment, especially given that some of the attachments behind these excessively high kill requirements were grips and muzzles that would affect your weapon significantly. So a good change in my opinion. If you log back into the game for the next playtest, I recommend checking your attachment availability for some of your weapons. You might have some new toys to play with and augment your weapon and your playstyle to suit you better. Me personally, well, I unlocked the 40 times scope on the M200 as a result of this change, and uh, yeah, look, I never thought I would be so happy sitting on the far edges of a map, scoring kills from a whole ass kilometer away. Battlebit Remastered gets sniping really, really right, with its zeroing mechanic and all the attachments that work in tandem with each other, so much so to the point that even sitting out to such a distance is effective with the right loadout and with a little bit of patience from you, the shooter. And the kills I was scoring here with this absolute chungus of a scope definitely made the goody-good chemical in my brain go brr, 
<laughs> Seriously, the footage in the background here just shows how effective this 40 times scope was with the right weapon and loadout. But what it doesn't show was my stupid, giggly schoolgirl laughter as I was scoring these kills. If you were watching my stream when I got this gameplay, you would have caught that live. I was sort of challenging myself to see what the longest range kill was that I could score, and I think I tapped out at around about 1,004 meters or something stupid like that. Like I said, a whole ass kilometer away. As a player that normally likes to play extremely aggressively, I was actually having far too much fun with this kind of playstyle, and is something that I'll definitely be doing again when the map allows it. If you want to see more content like this sniping shenanigans in the future, then hit that subscribe button down below to stay update with all future video releases. There is a lot more sniping action coming from Battlebit Remastered on the channel real soon. But anyway, moving on beyond my dumb self setting records for how far away I can conduct brain surgery from, weapons, skins, and camos also got a small facelift. They apply far better to weapons across the board now, and if I'm not mistaken, I also believe that the selection of weapons skins has grown exponentially since a few playtests ago. I could be wrong about that, but I swear there are a lot more camo options in the game now, including some new solid color camos out there, which also, I have to admit, look pretty fucking sweet. On top of all that, the menu for selecting your camouflages has also gotten a much needed update, which makes the whole browsing and choosing a camouflage experience a far, far easier job. You know, all small stuff that is helping to bring the experience of the game to a higher standard and just making the flow of interacting with the menus far more enjoyable. On top of that, some of the weapons in the game have received a complete and total revamp on their visuals. The two weapons to get this facelift treatment that we know of exactly are the Honey Badger and the M9 Sidearm, and I've got to be real, these new models look absolutely fantastic. I unfortunately didn't take the time to get a before and after comparison for you guys, but look, I think the results speak for themselves here, despite this being a low poly sort of shooter. These weapon models, they look detailed, they look fantastic, and apparently more weapons are going to be Getting this sort of treatment in the near future. So keen to see the visual aesthetic of the game, despite it being again a low poly design, actually being uplifted a little bit. It's going to go a long way I think in selling the game to more people in the long run. Another big quality of life feature that I believe will be on display in the next public playtest update I guess you could call it, is the fact that players will now be able to bandage themselves while driving vehicles if they're shot from within the cockpit. I know for my fellow helicopter pilots out there this is going to be a a godsend of a change given the fact that well if you were shot in the pilot seat and you started bleeding you needed to absolutely book it to a safe landing spot or risk bleeding out entirely now you're gonna have an opportunity to at least get yourself stabilized before falling back to base and healing up properly Given how prevalent bleeding damage is in Battlebit Remastered, I think this is actually a pretty solid change at the end of the day. I know there may be some skepticism from players out there who are a bit concerned that this may just buff helicopters and their survivability in the long run, but I kind of feel as though helicopter pilots are already weak enough to, you know, some good well-placed shots without needing to factor in bleeding damage and needing to find a quick, smart landing spot as required. So, yeah. Happy with this change myself, I think it's a great quality of life update for vehicle players, especially our helicopter players in the community. But those are the big ticket items that have been worked on so far as of late, guys. But there is one more thing. Just one more little teaser that was sort of hidden in one of the updates by Mr. Okidoki himself. That being that a new attack C vehicle is now a work in progress. Which means that yes, naval combat is getting extended in Battlebit Remastered, which is exciting to see. There are a lot of maps in the game right now that do feature ample water access, and the water spaces right now are not used that heavily, because well, there just isn't that much in the way of water vehicles to be utilized. But well, we are about to see a brand new sea-based attack vehicle, which I can imagine is going to take a form similar to that of the attack boats from Battlefield 4. But I could also be in entirely wrong on that prediction and I'm looking forward to seeing what the developers can come up with for the water game of Battlebit Remastered. It is well and truly becoming a combined arms game in all theatres of war, that being the air, the land and the sea. 
But generally speaking, guys, Battlebit Remastered is quickly establishing itself as one of the best first-person shooter games on the market right now, and it's not even out yet. The fact that this game is still in its closed playtesting status and is only about to release into early access with a huge slew of plans to continue adding to the experience beyond said early access tells me that Battlebit Remastered has got a very bright future ahead of it. If you're someone like me who is just looking, craving even, that Battlefield-esque shooter experience that has been left in the void by the likes of, say, Battlefield 2042, well, this is the game for you, and we're not far off from its release. That'll be all from me for today, folks. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to backhand the like button as it does go a long way to supporting the channel and sharing the video out to new viewers. If you're new here and you enjoyed the video, well, consider subscribing as well to stay up to date with all future content we release on the channel. We've got a lot of BattleBits stuff and other